Maayong hapon, kanatong tanan. And today, we are diving into the essentials of SAP Business One. So thank you again for joining us to uncover the key to the optimal performance with SAP Business One Server Best Practices. And let's explore the technical necessities of SAP Business One version for HANA. And also, we are privileged to be joined by Westcon Comstore team to do a bonus session on SAP Business One Security. So, let's unlock the potential of seamless operations together. Um, but first, let me run through our webinar protocol. So, please introduce yourselves in the chat box. So, please type in your name and um, what company you're from so that we can acknowledge their presence. And for a better listening experience, please keep your microphones on mute. And for questions, please message Windell, Ruel, Angeline, or Marife for Luzon customers. And we also have Glenn for Visman customers. And we will try to answer everything by the end of this session. And please keep your comments very positive and optimistic in the chat box. And for today's agenda, we will focus on and try to answer the following. So the key SAP Business One server optimization techniques, the understanding of SAP Business One version for HANA technical requirements, the practical insights on securing your SAP Business, Business One system, and lastly, the, um, the strengthening of your SAP Business One security. So let's pave the way for more efficient, innovative, and successful technological future. Cause here in Arc One, we've always got you covered. Okay, now let's hear some words from our dynamic CEO, who is always on a mission to keep our digital world in top shape, and no other than Mr. Irwin Padrique. Hi, sir. Salamat. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tila. Salamat for that kind introduction. Good afternoon. Maayong hapon. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. It's always a pleasure to welcome you in our event. And as always, great to see familiar faces. Noticeably, most of us who registered in this event are coming from the system admin or IT professionals background. Katulad nyo. I always wonder what's the best practice when it comes to operations and maintenance of our SAP B1 server. But regardless whether you are running an SQL or HANA, still there are common best practices that needs to be followed and matrices that needs to be observed. The common goal here is to maintain and run an efficient environment. So just a raise of hands or just some sort of a confirmation who among us here have tried doing or into endurance sports like running, marathon, or you know, swimming, or even triathlon? So let me see. Marami, Glenn, marami. meron ba? Ito, Glenn. <laughs> How about you, Glenn? Si Sir Hermie na grace ng hand. Oh, yes. The RV. Oh. Yes. Wow. Mukhang maraming athletics dito. Si athletes dito. Very good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so, so the reason I ask is that I kind of relate this initiative or project to touch endurance sports. Now, during my younger days, not so long ago, when I used to indulge in such sports, my objective back then was to complete the race safely and decently. Since I wanted to complete the race, I always have a plan that I needed to execute. Part of this plan is to have a coach, una, making myself uh, physically and psychologically fit. Physical fitness meant an improvement in my diet and improvement in my physical activities like running, cycling, swimming, and not skipping any of those practices. Well, this is similar to what you do or what we do as systems engineers or system admin in charge of our network. We wanted to follow those best practices. You know, why reinvent the wheel if something is existing and proven already? No? As long as it would help us meet our objective, which is running an efficient and cyber threat-free environment. And that would be our topic for today. 
our superstar in the team, Mr. Arvi Segoksok, and our security expert from our technology partner, Mr. Pons, will cover those today. Yes, tama kayo. Specifically, this session was designed with you in our minds. So again, salamat for being with us today. No? Over to you, Pila. Thank you, sir. And true to everything that you've said. So our first speaker for this afternoon is one of Arc One's champion. He is an SAP Business One technical lead and has five years in the IT consulting industry. So from different industries to help drive growth, success. And according to him, technical efficiency is the name of the game. So let's all welcome Mr. RV Sagoksok. Hi, Arv. Hi, Fila. Thank you. So to start with, um, for those uh, hindi ako na, uh, hindi ako kilala, my name is Ray Valencia Waksok, or you can call me RV. I am the SAP Business One Technical Lead of Arc One Solutions, and I've been in the SAP Business One industry for the past um, five years. So um, the next few slides will be some okay, sort okay, of. Delivery ko? Malino ba? Yata eh. Okay ba? Oh, sorry for that. So yeah, um, to start, uh, so this the, for the next few slides is some sort of um, it's a mix of um, uh, for the past few years I gained this knowledge and how to optimize and um, I search it for, from as well from the web and collaborate with some of our um, technical guys with SAP. So to start. Um, here are the list of um, some few SAP Business One optimization techniques. So please do note that um, every SAP Business One deployment is unique and optimization efforts should be tailored to your specific environment and requirements and regularly monitoring, performance testing, and collaboration with SAP Business One technical consultant like me to help you maintain and optimize your SAP Business One server. So to start, the first and foremost is the SAP Business for the hardware requirements. So SAP Business One housed in on, on a specific server, so it needs to have a CPU. So the CPU, it should be at least a multi-core processor and with a minimum of Intel Zion or equivalent with 64-bit architecture. For the RAM, it is recommended at a minimum um, 16 gig. If this is a larger installation or you have a lot of databases and this is a big company, you need to have higher than 16 gig. And please do note that RAM is dependent on database size and concurrent user. And as a rule of thumb, we allocate um, 1.5 or 2 gig of RAM per SAP B1 user. And then um, the next one is for the disk. Um, the minimum or the it is highly suggested that SAP Business One database is um, should be exist or it should exist on a RAID 10 volume with a minimum SAS of 100k or 10k RPM, and most preferred is um, 15k of RPM. For the network, since SAP Business One server and client should communicate at a real time. So the bandwidth should be at a minimum of uh, 100 megabits with a low latency, which is uh, less than 1 MS. Uh, it is on uh, same Win server. If DNS and Active Directory is configured, it should be on the same um, DNS and Active Directory as well. So for the database management, since SAP Business One becomes fragmented due to insertion, uh, insertion um, in, uh, updates and deletion of data, fragmentation exists when indexes have pages and in which the logical ordering based on a key, key value does not does not match sa kanyang logical um, storage. So it over time it slows the 
performance or it degrades the performance of our system. To combat this, um, SAP recommends to run a RSP task or remote support platform on a monthly basis to re-index the SAP Business One database. So the task number is um, 1469218. So you can retrieve that one on a remote support platform. So this is the remote support platform. It is um, a software. Na it is from SAP itself. So here on the task, you can see a lot of um, tasks that you can use. For example, if you want to check your database, you can do that one. And if you see the SBO common database is already too large, you can run, run that one and shrink your database. And other tasks that you can run or you can use, especially if you encountered a problem and you can fix that one through RSP if it is advised by SAP. So to run this one, you need to select the specific task and click approve. And on the active task, you need to click again and click run. So we'll search for the um, task that is related to SQL when it comes to the performance. So first, it is the update statistics. You can run that one and you can uh, configure it to uh, run monthly. You can schedule it and it will automatically uh, run the task and then the re-indexing. You can also select the task and then um, schedule it on your preferred time and date. And please do note that during the process, your SAP Business One is not accessible. So it is highly suggested that you run the specific task on a weekend or there is no specific or um, there are no users na they need to access the SAP since it, it will hinder the SAP Business One not accessible that time. Okay, so um, so far so good. If you have some questions, um, feel free to chat sa chat box natin and I'll answer them uh, after the discussion na lang. Okay. So for the backup strategy, um, SAP recommends that um, we need to set a backup and restore strategy to ensure the data integrity and availability in the case of hardware failures or data corruption. So we also suggest, or SAP also suggests that to check the backup to, um, to make sure na um, working siya as, uh, as expected. And also, um, third-party software is also um, recommended. Uh, for example, uh, VM and then um, Azure Backup. You can also use that one as a uh, third-party backup software. And suggested backup strategy, uh, full database backup. Um, you can do that one once a week uh, with a retention period of one month. And for the differential backup uh, daily with one month retention period, um, transactional log backup, you can uh, schedule it for uh, for every four hours once a week with one week uh, for every four hours and with a one week retention period. And the difference between the full and differential, the full backup um, creates a backup the entire data set and regardless of the any previous backups or circumstances, um, it create niya yung backup na yun. So for example, your current backup or the size of your backup is 5 gig, so the next backup is still 5 gig unless there are changes na made that make the backup big, more bigger. So for the differential backup, um, additions and alterations since the most recent backup. So yung iba backup lang niya is yung changes after nung last full backup. So that's the reason why we highly suggest na once a week lang yung full backup and then daily yung differential so that yung difference na lang ng full backup na lang iyang, uh, yung kanyang iba backup. So hindi siya malaki yung backup daily. So next, um, performance, monitoring, and tuning. So the use of monitoring tools to keep an eye of your server performance, uh, database activity, and resource uh, utilization. Actually, you can also utilize yung RSP kanina. So I'll show you na kung ano yung magagamit or makikita nyo with um, RSP. So here, um, on the overview, 
if your RSP is properly set up or configured, it will show you yung mga database nyo. Uh, it will show if your database is on a good condition. Um, yung green light signifies as healthy and red light is parang hindi siya configured. So if you click the result, it will show a um, system status report. So yung mga system status report, uh, it will show you yung mga details ng mga, yung current system po ninyo, especially for the database. And you can also check yung if ever you have uh, UDFs, kung an, what is the size of your UDF and how many tables per UDF as well. So balik tayo sa system information or the database information. Um, if you click details, it will show you the log and the data uh, MDF file. So if you hover it on the MDF or log file, it will show you if it's healthy, green basha or yellow, what does it signifies and there is already an instruction if ever needed na i-configure ninyo. If ever na show na uh, green siya, ah, hindi siya green, yellow or red, there is already an instruction how to process it and how to use the RSP to optimize your database. Okay. So next, um, SAP want to make sure na up to date yung latest patches natin. So, and server packs provided by SAP. And please do note na if there are new releases, if you want to deploy sa production ninyo, just make sure first na test ninyo muna sa internal ninyo or parang separate na data or server so that just to make sure na walang conflict sa current setup ninyo especially if you have uh, add-ons or third-party add-ons make sure na working pa rin siya sa latest databases and we highly suggest na if are there are new release notes kindly check baka meron dun na uh, you can uh, help you performance improvements or in bugs bug uh, fixes as well So since SAP Business One uh, um, configuration, um, the client and the workstation should communicate um, real time. So we need to optimize our um, network. So we wanna ensure that network infrastructure is capable of handling traffic between the client machine and the SAP B1 server. So if there are uh, packet losses, we want to make sure na ma-address ma natin yan kasi it will delay the transaction of our users. Uh, and um, uh, the best scenario that I can think of is, for example, um, on the workstation of the cost or the client or the users, SAP B1 users, um, there, are, there is a delay when it comes to the transaction, especially retrieving. So what we do, as a technical uh, consultant, uh, we want to make sure that this is not a uh, database or performance issue when it comes to the hardware or the of the server or the workstation, baka sa network side siya. So we let the customer perform or the client perform the transactions, the server. If ever na medyo mas efficient or much faster, there's a tendency na um, this is a traffic issue already or the network issue. So make sure na ma-minimize din natin yung latency kasi yung latency is just uh, parang um, the response time of the server go uh, uh, from the workstation to the server or vice versa. And if your database is already more than five years worth of data, it is um, highly suggested na we can archive it. So you can utilize the SAP Business One archiving functionality to move historical data to a separate storage while keeping it accessible and just to take note that um, if you want to archive your database um, i think uh, you need to uh, close yung mga open na mga transactions next and um, normally kasi if you have a lot of um, sap business one add-ons it sometimes if you log in it will delay yung yung mga lago natin di ba if if you experience na marami kayong add-ons sa SAP Business One ninyo especially na yung automatically siya start up yung automatic yung startup niya so we highly suggest na you uh, yung startup mode niya is manual so for example um, if hindi mo naman gagamitin siya on a daily basis 
um, you can turn it off or shut uh, parang yung startup mode lang niya is manual so that the user can turn it off or turn it on so that hindi ma-delay yung transactions or pag login niya kasi yung ginagawa kasi ni SAP Business One during the login it will load up all the third party add-ons na kailangan niya pag naka-set siya automatically yung startup Okay, so um, any questions so far? Feel free to chat sa chat box, okay? So now, um, meron ba tayong mga, or I think meron tayong mga customers na naka-SAP Business One HANA na, right? So you can, if you, uh, can you please raise your hand sa nakahana na? Or you can send a um, react or a thumbs up. Or like, sa mga nakahana na. Yun, si Sir Peter. Yes, so marami din nakahana na. So to fully understand yung SAP HANA natin, so first, we want to define kung ano yung SAP HANA. So SAP HANA or yung HANA is derived from High Performance Analytic Appliance. So it is a multi model database that stores data and memory instead of keeping it on a desk. So SAP HANA platform is based on a breakthrough in memory computing. So the technology enables rapid data access to, to keep deep analysis on live data. So yung mga transactions niya, if ever maram, marami na tayong transactions, so is store na niya sa memory so that if we need it or we need to process those data, data mas madali na lang yung pag, um, pag retrieve niya. So it is first launched on way back 2010. So SAP HANA is a model, modern and mature solution used by ten, tens of thousands of customers around the world. And then SAP HANA is significantly faster than other database management on the market today. So that is the claim of SAP Business One or the SAP Business One are HANA itself. So why choose HANA? So what are the benefits? So here are the 10 benefits of SAP HANA. So it's said to be complete. It includes database services, advanced analytical processing, application development, and data integration. So unlike MSQL, um, I think there are no um, built-in analytical process. So hindi mo niya, hindi, wala siyang uh, built-in na uh, analytical process. So, yun yung parang advantage ni SAP HANA. So, it is fast since naka-end memory na siya and usually HANA is, yung ginagamit niya is um, parang um, SSD na siya. So, it's much faster yung mga response time niya when it comes to the query um, in a large production application. It is also versatile, support hybrid transactional and analytical process and many data types. So it is also efficient, provides a smaller data footprint with no data duplication, advanced compression, and reducing data silos. Um, it is powerful as well, uh, rapidly queries large data sets and massively parallel processing, so MPP database. And it is easily scalable, so for the volume and concurrent user across the distributed environment. So if you want to scale up yung um, data, data natin or yung server natin, it is on, uh, already easy. So it's flexible. You can deploy sa public, private cloud, uh, multiple clouds, on-premise, and hybrid or even hybrid scenarios. And um, intelligent since uh, augment applications, analytics, is already built in sa machine learning nat sa SAP HANA. And Secures as well offers comprehensive data and application security setup. So next, um, since SAP HANA needs a certified HANA server or hardware, so we need, we want to make sure na yung um, server natin if uh, gustong natin mag HANA, it should be HANA certified and it should have uh, sufficient RAM for both HANA database and SAP Business One application, uh, multi-core CPU for optimal performance. And if you need more information about hardware na supported ni SAP HANA, 
you can visit the this website. And by the way, um, we can send you yung uh, copy of these slides after the, the presentation. Para ma share din namin yung uh, if you want to access this um, hardware requirements. So for the operating system, um, there are only two types or two great OS system na supported for the HANA installation, the uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise server for SAP applications and Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux for SAP, SAP HANA. So personally, um, I'm currently using only uh, SAP HANA uh, for the SUSE. Not uh, I haven't tried Red Hat, but maybe soon, since I think um, SUSE is more popular here in the Philippines or normally sa mga during training is SUSE yung ginagamit. Um, rare yung Red Hat. And for the database, as mentioned, uh, it's in memory platform. And then the license is based on the number of users and required uh, memory capacity. So for every 64 gig of RAM is equal to one HANA engine license. So for example, if you have 96 gig of RAM and you want to fully utilize yung RAM natin, you need to have at least um, two HANA engine. Or else, um, yung utilization natin sa HANA is up only to 64 gig. So it does not uh, include yung OS na, na requirements natin for the RAM. It's only for the um, the database server or the database engine. Uh, for the storage, a high performance storage system to accommodate the in memory nature of HANA. Since in memory na siya, it needs uh, to process or transfer the data much faster and the storage requirements will vary uh, vary um, based on data volume and usage so for example you have um, the root or the c drive is 100 gig um, hana shared by the way yung hana shared it's a drive na kung saan um, yung some installation ni hana is stalled or installed and for the hana log um, for the storage, it is dependent for the minimum um, storage. It is dependent of your RAM size. So for example, if you have 128 gig of RAM, so at a minimum, you should have at least 128, um, uh, 128 storage for the log. And for the data, uh, times three, the RAM size natin. For network infrastructure, as uh, um, previously discussed, it should be fast and reliable since um, yung communication ng servers natin and the workstation is real time. So there are, if ever hindi natin or hindi sila mag-communicate, so it's a uh, parang nag-down talaga siya. So hindi makakakommunicate or hindi makakonect si client if ever hindi fast and efficient yung or reliable uh, yung, yung network natin. And then software components, SAP Business One application um, is a software. And then yung HANA, SAP HANA is yung database software. So to manage yung um, database natin, kailangan natin yung HANA Studio for administration and monitoring, a mobile extern or PuTTY for SSH client. If you want to configure yung Linux natin, if you, if you want to run some commands, um, it is run through mobile XTERM or PuTTY or any SSH um, client software. For transferring files, normally we use when SCP for transferring to or from Linux going to, from our Windows side of server. So next one is uh, practical insights of securing your SAP Business One uh, system. So, uh, uh, while waiting lang then, um, I'll answer some of the few questions. Uh, is RSP available sa V1 SQL? Yes, uh, available siya for both um, MSQL and HANA. So, yeah, to continue, um, uh, so remember that um, SAP Business One security is an ongoing process. So as new threats emerge, it's essential to adapt and update your security measure, measures 
to stay ahead of potential risk. So if you want, you can consult us or our security expert um, like Sir Pons here to inform you about the latest security trends and also what is highly recommended to our current setup. So, if you want to make sure na secured yung system natin, like our Windows server, it should be regularly updated. So, since it's still a software, there is a regular updates and patches of SAP Business One. Na this will help us address yung mga known vulnerabilities and security issues, and also bug fixes if ever needed. Um. So if you want to secure yung system natin, we want to implement a strict access control to ensure na users only have access to the modules, uh, data, and that are relevant to the roles, user-based um, access to assign permissions and restrict unauthorized access. So, um, and also, we want to make sure na strong yung password policies natin kasi minsan yung ginagawa natin is uh, when it comes to the password, uh, normally yung password is 1, 2, 3 or if manager, manager lang din yung password. So, if you want to protect yung SAP Business 1 natin, um, we should enforce yung strong uh, policies for all users. And then MFA is already supported sa... Uh, bagong releases ni SAP Business One. So there is already an identity and authentic authentication management in SAP Business One, which allow users to uh, authenticate their identity. So for more info, you can visit um, this, uh, this uh, URL. So um, for the security, we should deploy as well the firewalls, then intrusion detection system, um, prevention to safeguard our network. Since um, SAP Business One can be deployed to the internet, we want to make sure na protected yung system natin, uh, especially your database. Because um, based on uh, previous experience, there are a lot of clients na nabiktima ng ransomware and ayaw natin mangyari yan sa ating mga system. Especially yung may nangyari na uh, may uh, na ransomware sila tapos malayo yung backup na na-retrieve nila. So we want to make sure na it is safe and um, uh, as much as possible, i-store natin sa ibang um, storage or ibang place yung like for the clou uh, sa cloud para may backup tayo, if ever. And then encryption, normally, uh, may encryption naman si MSQL or si HANA. And also, we want to make sure na gagamit tayo ng HTTPS for communication between clients and server. And um, it also includes yung paggamit ng SSL certificate. Uh, it also helps us na para hindi natin, uh, para secure din yung um, communication natin. So yun, uh, we already talked about regular backups. So and then configuration, uh, preferably offsite. So offsite means can parang um, it's not inside of your network, and also we ensure data recovery as well in case of breach or system failure. So security monitoring, we wanna make sure na nata track natin yung mga naga access and detect yung mga uh, unusual activities and potential uh, security breaches. So through yung mga firewalls, um, we can detect this one and we want to make sure na know natin or kilala natin yung naga access sa system or network natin. So the most important one as well is employee training. No matter how secure or no matter um how strong is the yung mga policies natin and the end of the day it is the employees na parang gagumagamit or na-access so we want to make sure na alam nila yung mga best practices we educate them about phishing social engineering and importance of keeping sensitive information confidential um this one para optional na lang siya um 
if but it is a must na develop a clear response plan that outlines steps to be taken in case of there is a security breach, uh, breach and then assign responsibilities the and establish communication protocols and establish uh, tabletop exercises to ensure readiness if ever this happens. And um, most importantly, we should limit yung um, administrator access natin. We wanna, uh, we don't want yung mga users natin, kahit hindi naman kailangan na may user or administrator access. So yun, uh, this will be my last slide. So there's a question in the chat. Na, um, can you show how to access RSP? Um, for now, I cannot show you, but you can check if it's installed the system. Ninyo. You just have to search a remote support platform. If not, um, you may install or you can download it from SAP itself. So it is um, available the system. Uh, you can uh, check that one the system or the server. Ninyo. And normally it is included the uh, installer natin. So that will be all. Thank you, uh, Fila. Back to you. Okay, thank you, RV. So indeed, um, there are no shortcuts when it comes to um, tech greatness. Okay, so before we will move on to our next speaker, which is Westcon Com Store, we will have a mini game first. So the title of the game is Riddle Quest. So please read the item per slide carefully and guess the right answer. Um, there are five questions that consist of English and Tagalog. So the first to type in the correct answer will be the winner. And winners, the five winners will receive 300 peso voucher from Food Panda from Westcon Comstore. Okay, are you ready? Can I show a raise of hand or a clap hand? Okay, sige. So, for our first question, pabilisan to ha. First question. Isang balong malalim, punong puno ng patalim. What's the answer? May nag-answer ng bibig, ipin, mouth. Sige, let's um, guess what's the answer. Next slide. Okay, the answer is mouth or bibig. Okay, who got it first? Um, PC. Um, who is the um, username? PC, please um, send me an email. Um... Give me your, um, um, no, rather, please send me an email. I'll just chat my email ad here in the chat box. Okay, so for the next question is, Dalawang batong maitim, malayo ang narating. Mata ba? What's the answer, Elaine? Mata. Mata or eyes. Okay, congratulations. Our winner is um, on my side, it's from Intak. Did I guess it right, Windell? Yes, okay. Dan. Dan. Congratulations. For our third question What has a neck but no head? May nag-answer ng bottle. Bottle? May botelya. Okay. What's the correct answer? It's bottle. Okay. Congratulations. Who's, who's our winner? Miss Grace D. Um, congratulations. For our fourth question. What has hands but cannot clap? Type in your answer. May nag-answer ng clock. Okay, what's the correct answer? Clock nga. Congratulations to the winner. For our fifth and last question. 
Hindi pare, hindi hari. Nagdadamit ng sari-sari. May nag-answer ng paru-paru. Butterfly. Okay. Congratulations. What's the correct answer? Butterfly or paru-paru. Okay. Congratulations to all the winners. Don't go yet because later on we will be having a raffle draw. Again, care of from Westcon. For our next speaker, he will help us boost our digital armor in securing our SAP Business One. So we have the Solutions Architect from Westcon Com Store, Mr. Pons de la Cruz. Hi, Sir Pons. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Let me share my screen first. Okay, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul Villa Cruz, and I'm the Solutions Architect of Westcon Solutions. Uh, it's really a pleasure to you know, listen and uh, to hear with you the different technologies for today. And my part is to share to you the some security solutions that surrounds uh, sub D1. But before I proceed, uh, can you see my slide already? Yes, sir. I can see your slide. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so my role for today is to share to you the uh, some strategies on how to strengthen SAP B1 system defense against cyber threats. Uh, you know, security is not just about protection already. It's not just about security. It's about securing the system and securing the success of the company. Like, for example, if your organization already installed SAP B1 system, it's a big, it's really a big investment. So once it is installed properly, it can be counted as a success of your company. But what will happen if, in case that the whole system gets compromised, so that the whole operation gets affected, you lose money, and sometimes you lose your job. So it's high time now that we look at how to secure SAP B1. Uh, earlier, uh, it was already shown the different approaches on how to secure the SAP B1 system. But in my case, what I'm going to show you is to on how are we going to secure this system coming or using a third party system. Meaning to say that we are not going to touch a SAP B1 system in order for you to gain security. Okay. And before that, let us realize, let us all realize that SAP B1 system is under attack from all angles. Uh, it could be that uh, your SAP B1 system is already embedded with unwanted programs. What are those unwanted programs? Everything that we don't like to run in our system, ransomware, virus, malware. Those are the things that we don't want in our system. We, that, we want them out any time of the day. And then sometimes SAP B1 is not updated or properly patched, which is which opens our system, primary system, to the exploits of uh, mostly our hacktivists. And then also uh, data breaches coming from, from third party or unfortunately data breaches is sometimes performed with the help of our internal users. And if I go now to the right, there are some uh, denial of service attacks. This one is just they just attack your system, just continue spinning on your server because you don't have sufficient protection for a single for a simple attack like DOS. So your system will go to its knees. No one can transact a business any, anymore. So if you calculate uh, how much money are you losing every minute that your SAP system is not working, that is a huge money actually because most or all organization that employ the service of sub business one utilizes this system as their primary tool to operate their business. Okay, parang big window siya eh, or big door. Instead of you getting a big crack, you deploy this uh, big uh, enterprise software because this is where your business runs. 
And then, meron pa, mga phishing attacks. So, and then, meron pa tayong pinakabago ngayon. I don't know if you are already familiar, but I'm sure you are. Is that we have insecure interfaces and APIs. This is very common nowadays because sometimes because all the applications now when they migrate to micro segmentations, uh, I mean I mean uh, micro micro services. The only way for them, the only way for them to expand the application or capability of their program is to open up an API. They make the API public for to communicate interface. Integrate seamlessly with third party. That's where the problem is. Kaya lo makituloy yung ane, yung surface attack because of APIs. And sometimes, ah, as in as part of the practice nowadays is that organization does not face only customers. There is a big path or pathways for the businesses that opens. To the back end, it is to be suppliers of raw materials, other companies that they service, they accept payments, that they pay through the back end. So those those are kind of those are the kind of I would say integration through APIs that can happen within your organization, and sometimes it becomes insecure, and sometimes we lost track of how many APIs do we have. So all those things we have to address. Okay, I listed just a few in here, but it's not the complete list. I'm sure you know more, you experience more, but these are the you know that represents the most of the biggest impact. Okay, pagdating sa attack sa mga ERP system like SAP B1. Okay, actually earlier na mention naman na yung mga Ways on how to secure your SAP D1, no? Sometimes, but you know, you do that within the SAP Business One. But sometimes, I don't know if you will agree with me. You can just type it in that securing SAP D1 from within or from the SAP D1 system itself is so challenging. The reason for that is that listen in here. Hopefully. If it's not true, just let me know. I mentioned, I will mention complex system architecture. Okay, there are different modules. So where are you going to implement the data, the database of the user? Okay, those are the questions. Customize functionality. So it's very, it's really you know hard to track. What are, where are we on the on the application? Okay, we have a high number of interfaces and and integration. This is what I'm saying earlier. Because an application cannot be on cannot be a standalone. It needs to interact with other applications. And the proprietary protocols, ah, uh, and then detailed and fine-grained access control. Yes, although we have a set of users defined who can access, who can access is B1. Medio detalya do machado. I don't know if you're practicing that, but. It's not actually an issue by itself, eh? but the issue here is that is the SAP B1 really designed to handle this kind of processes? Okay. Note, another thing is that no tolerance for unplanned downtime due to supported processes. Uh, mahirap mag-upgrade. No, you have to you have to uh, uh, notify everyone, the different system owners. No? And then lastly, yung lack of knowledge and process for ERP security. Na mention natin kanina to, no? That's why we are here. Lack of knowledge and process for ERP like SAP B1. How do we secure it? Because this is a big software installation and very critical to everybody's business. Okay. So, so kami is that we we don't know SAP B1, but we know how to secure your SAP B1. Okay. So this is just an example. I would say our practical strategies to enhance the SAP B1 security. We have four steps, and these four steps, when guided by a certain standard or certain regulation like NIST, NIST is the National Institute for Standard and Standardization of Technology. So, yeah, we can elevate 
the level of security of our system without without touching the sub B1 because we can implement the security surrounding your sub installation. Okay? Why is it important? So alam na natin na under attack tayo, di ba? Continuous uh, from all angles, uh, external user, internal user, weaknesses ng software itself, and then meron pang mga unwanted programs, all kind of threats. Meron pa yung bihi anu ba yung changing behavior of the users. So we have to track all of those things. Now how can we secure that? Okay, I we listed here for, and again going back to my question kanina, why is it very important? It is because Security guarantees continuous operation. It's no longer just to secure the system. Because, di ba, earlier in the presentation, we need our, we want our sub B1 to be as efficient as possible, as fast as possible. That which one, meron tayong sapana, di ba? That works on the, that that works or that uh, uses the memory uh, to uh, using the uses the memory for its database operation para mas maging mabilis. Pero kung insecure naman yung system natin, in just one instance, all those promises are gone. So, yung security natin is as important as the platform of the sub-B1 itself. High memory, high processor, multiple servers, clustered servers, uh, with backup somewhere else, in the cloud, whatever. Securing the system is as important as that one. If not more important, okay, to contribute to the success of the success of the of your software installation to in delivering continuous operation. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to mention is that regardless of it should apply, I should say it should apply to all the B1 application platform, all instances. It can be in production, it can be in the non-production environment like your development, quality assurance, sandbox, and pre-production. So, because if we're going to leave one uh, environment insecure, then that is already the weakest part which can be exploited by the hackers. So, parang wala lang security. As if, uh, you know, securing the main hall with the, with the biggest padlock, kung di mo naman pala na secure yung pinakamaliit na window, Eh, kung magali, eh, ang mga mag, ang mga hackers these are not ano eh, di ba? They they come they come in ready and prepared with the right tools. Eh, kung naka-open pa yung isang door mo, very easy for them to access that. And then make your uh, security investment uh, useless for that matter. No. So what are those things that pwede nating magawa? So we have here we call it practical strategies no, but later on we're going to put in our own interpretation because Westcon is a distribution company and uh, we partner with Arquano for the for the deployment of this kind of technology for the end user like you. Okay, what are those things? So, number one, we have to identify and mitigate vulnerabilities. Uh, these are easy, no? Sa inyo, siguro patches, patch. But again, sometimes pag, ang pagpapatch natin, uh, we need to find out when can we put down the turn off the, the system, no? So, as again, that's another one of the challenges. And then, meron tayong insecure configurations. Probably from the very beginning, we did not we did not deploy the our our sub B1 system with security in mind. So it's just after thought, no? Pag kami dumating na tao, we just entertain a new user. We just oh, what's your name? What should be your access? You're new. You can access finance. Your sales. You can access sales. Oh, so those those kind of things. Tapos may mga napumut pa on change ng mga departments, diba? So how are we going to to uh, manage those things within the sub B1. And then, ultimately, meron na tayo excessive user privileges na nangyayari. You know, you know the boss asked for special access. This is, uh, sometimes we cannot do anything for that. Uh, but to give them. Uh, I'm sure it happened. And then another thing, uh, uh, na strategy is that yung number two, identify and remove dangerous interfaces and APIs between the different sub-B1 applications. Sometimes, of course, we're not going to remove the use, uh, what is yung mga digit na API integration, di ba? So, we were only removing those things that are unnecessary. Okay? And how do we do that? We have to, we have to uh, have a good monitoring tool. When it's not, the sec not SIEM, not network, but API monitoring itself. 
because that is the new uh, that is the new uh, opening for our uh, for the cyber threats outside no and then says dito we should apply this especially those with third parties and that are internet facing so lahat naman siguro tayo dito we manage, we are managing a system that is connected to the internet because that makes us very productive internet facing allows us allows our people to work anywhere diba? uh, especially now uh, there is really a need to work from home to work from somewhere else those those kind of things so another thing is that you monitor and respond that's number three, mon number three monitor and respond to sensitive user activity and sub b1 specific indicators of compromise how do we do that we'll show you later okay uh monitor number four monitor for the sub b1 data and user credentials okay uh do we have a different set of users for our sub B1 as opposed to our user in the email? Do we have different set of users to different systems? Pero pagka kapareho, are we using a, a uh, are we using a uh, consistent credentials between the different systems? Okay. So that's what we're we're going to address now uh i mean that's what we're going to show you how can we address how can we give meaning to this uh, practical strategies this one is uh, but these are just prescription but, but how okay in doing so uh we we borrow the framework of nist so because I, our intention here is that we just we don't just tell you the solution uh, we give you another benefit such that when you implement this, you are actually taking some of the items uh, required by NIST. Therefore, you're making the compliance of your organization at a higher level. Hindi tayo basta lang gumagawa. We're doing it for many reasons. Hindi lang yung ah, secure tayo. Dapat tayo mag, mag, uh, mag invest ng security because nahak na tayo. <laughs> Di ba? So, Melon pa on the side, which is that compliance. Uh, and then in this case, we're promoting yung NIST. Uh, it's not uh, NIST, why NIST? It's because it's very simple to follow and we believe it's very effective. Okay. So, going back to solution number one, we have the identify and mitigate vulnerabilities, insecure configurations, and excessive user privileges. So, you see, on the middle, we have the identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. These are the pillars of NIST. We will use this all throughout in, uh, you know, in uh, laying out the solutions uh, from identify to recover. And by the way, these solutions are not exclusive and not exhaustive. Uh, there might be other solutions uh, that you know which are not listed here. Uh, so, Samen, is that uh, this is our capability we can that we which we together with arc one can deliver it for you okay number one uh for example uh in this uh practical approach or practical stra strategy that under the identified pillar we have the vulnerability management how do we do that we have the vulnerability scanner and patch management this these two works together if you use the vulnerability scanner and you find something vulnerable the next thing, logical thing to do is to patch it immediately. Then how do you patch that? Uh, of course, you download, you get it from, you get it from the uh, sub B1. Uh, they, they own the software, then you deliver that. And of course, there are many best practices on how to deliver a patch management system. Uh, probably you know that better. But what, 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 what I'm saying here is that this is the process. And then number two, it we, we we under the identify we have to do some configuration management. That is the security configuration assessment tools. We will use that one to assess what the, that the configuration that we deploy is best according to best practice. Earlier I mentioned in simple thing as uh, password. Are you using a uh, secure password uh, or? Do you have MFA, multi-factor authentication? 
uh, what else? Or you're using a uh, very a pass phrase na siguro, paragraph phrase na, yung password na pagkahaba na. But are you securing those? But how are you going to secure those passwords? So that's another thing. Okay? Uh, this one, kaya, kaya dapat meron tayong ganitong mga activities in under the identify stage. Okay? Now, how are we going to protect once we identify? Now, we have yung dito, yung encryption, encryption and data protection. So, how do we do that? We The data itself that the sub one is uh, handling. See? We can uh, we can do some encryption. Uh, I suppose sub B1 has a built-in data encryption, but if there is none, uh, pwede namang maging third party tayo. Or, what we can do is that uh, if you have a central repository of data, that's where we can inject data encryption on the main uh, on the main uh, data storage. And then there is also since we have now uh, users that are mobile, work anywhere, work anytime, work everywhere. So endpoint encryption is very important. These are the data that are in motion. So we have to secure the data, which is the property of your organization that are in the laptops and other devices or other endpoint mobile devices, wherever, tablet, that is owned by the company. So you, it's not only that you have the right to secure that, it is your responsibility to secure that. And then uh, we have data protection. Then we have also the security for the about IAM, the access control and privilege management. IAM, sometimes you know this already, but the PAM, the previous access management, is also very important to secure. Because sometimes the uh, privilege access, if you're going to look at the, how do you call this one? The, who are those people that has a privilege access? These are the administrator. That's okay. These are the company owners. Because uh, <laughs> they have a very high role in the organization. So we have to also protect them because they sometimes they become the weakest part of our security of our uh, of the of our security system diba? Kasi special sila, so they always get special privileges over privilege because the privilege that they have is unnecessary with respect to their role and then also for the administrator of the different systems we can do our back no role based access control uh, which is very uh, commonly used or and also, we have to monitor yung user behavior and analytics, no? Pagka ang user natin, uh, unusual yung activity niya. From, diba, tumaas bigla yung kanyang uh, access. Naging sunod-sunod yung pag-login niya. Either right or wrong password. Those are alert. That is a change in behavior. Pagka nagbato siya ng malaking data, uh, those are it can be viewed as data exfiltration. So it should give you an alert. How do we do that? We have to understand the behavior of our user using behavior analytics. Analytics nowadays is very common. No? Uh, even uh, the tools that we are using now, uh, nag-upgrade uh, nag na rin sila. Eh, so using the same module, nagkaroon ng update, now very strong analytics niya. And uh, good is, when it comes to analytics, mayroon na siyang machine learning, may AI na siyang, the built-in, uh, those are good tools. No? And then also, we have to protect the network itself using firewalls and ITS, network security. So alam naman natin to, the only question here is that, do we need to give our SAP system a dedicated firewalls and ITS? It's a question that you should answer. Kasi ang mga firewalls in IPS natin ngayon are multi-segment. So it, it, it is based on your design. On our in your design, you know, we can help that. We can help you. Diba? We can give you a distributed firewall in IPS or a centralized firewall in IPS with a WAF. Yun ang maganda ngayon. Eh, diba? With WAF na kasi everything, all applications are webified. Hindi man lang tayong another way is yung network segmentation. No? Sometimes this one, this one is uh, used also as the uh, word na micro segmentation. The network segmentation is used to isolate the critical system from less critical systems. 
So obviously, SAT is a very critical system, so it has its own segment. The reason for that is it will be very easy for you to create a policy that is dedicated for your subsystem. Unlike kung naka-member siya sa, sa, sa general uh, zone, di ba? Uh, do you create policy? Baka mamiss mo pa yung IP address niya. Oh, Tatayin na. Di ba? So, yung network segmentation is important for you to you know, to classify your different system from critical, non-critical, and important. Di ba? Uh, critical meaning, siguro, mas marami sa ginahold na sensitive data ay meron siyang mga potentially or personally identifiable information. So, those are uh, the hues when are you going to mark a uh, server that holds the critical information, a critical system that, critical system. Okay. And then lastly, uh, under the protect is that uh, application security, secure development. For, I'm sure sub B1 has this one, but in case, no, uh, in case that you have other system uh, na considered as critical, you can actually use this one, yung part na to, yung application security, security development practices. You can ask them. What are the standards, common standards that they follow? Sub B1 is no question about this. Uh, they, they qualify for that. And then, pagdating naman sa detect, then we can go back to IAM you know, to, to detect that and then uh, detect further, uh, further, uh, ito, far, further uh, possible threats. I, I'm referring to it to user behavior analytics. No? We can detect that. And then also, uh, the SIEM uh, and real-time monitoring. So, kung we have an SIEM with or with uh, when we're talking SIEM, so we can now collect and analyze and correlate the security events and logs from various sources. So, you have a source like the security incident ng, ng operating system natin, ng mga Linux system natin. So, we can all put, in, uh, put them in the SIEM platform, correlate that, analyze, and then and then show one or few actionable items no para uh, mapatch natin yung mga uh, i mean to address the the alerts the security alerts happening in our in our system okay, meron din real time monitoring uh, which is here to monitor and respond to suspicious activities security events and anomalies in real time to proactively detect and, and mitigate risk this is actually referring to an xdr Okay, automatic sa meron kang na-detect and automatic ka nag-respond ka. Previously, previous, previously na siguro mga five years ago, itong loop na to, no, you have to monitor, then you respond automatically. These are very difficult to achieve. But right now, this is very easy to do. No? Uh, siguro we just, we just need to use a modern tool para maging automatic yung pag-respond natin when an alert is detected or when a security threat is detected okay then respond and then under the respond uh pillar we have your continuous monitoring and auditing you can use that one audits is considered as a response no because you identify the vulnerabilities misconfiguration and areas for improvement that can be counted as a response okay and then ultimately it's not part of the security uh, but when it comes to NIST, yung recover part kasi, na mention naman kanina, is the backup and recovery. Uh, okay? So, after the fact, how are you going to respond sa mga attacks? Of course, the number one tool that you need there is that you, sh you should have a backup data. Alam, na-delete na lahat ng file mo, na-run somewhere na lahat. Diba? So, what you can do is to, you don't want to pay. You just delete everything and then recover from backup. Uh, those are extreme scenario no? the, just to highlight the importance of the recovery stage of the NIST. Okay? Another solution that we have is that yung identify and remove dangerous interfaces and APIs between the, between the different sub D1 applications. Huh? Did we have different modules. Diba? Para malinis natin, uh, we remove what is not necessary for the subsystem to work, for the different modules to work seamlessly and function well to serve your organization. Okay, so again, we have the different pillars, identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. So 
Number one dito is that since we're talking about API, no? So we have to have yung API security gateway provide centralized, which provides centralized management security and monitoring of APIs. Monitoring of APIs, they start. Kasi pag kami nakita ang API on your system, open siya. And it's not necessary. The immediate action that you should do to protect your system is to remove it, patch it. Diba? Because Yun, yun, that's, uh, that's, yun. And then, uh, we can also do some API security testing to, this one, perform regular security testing of APIs to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses. For example, legit yung API natin. So, we, don't, we just don't count it as a legit. And we also test the integrity of that API. Kasi, di ba, uh, saan ba dumadaan ng mga magnanakaw? Sometimes, they don't do they don't enter the back door or force entry, di ba? Dumadaan sila sa mga, sa mga insecure na front door. So, the same thing here. So, we have the API security testing. Okay? And then, uh, moving forward is yung API threat detection and prevention. Uh, this one focus on API-specific threat detection and prevention. So, luckily, right now, these tools are, can, are easily found. So, marami, marami ng ganito. And, uh, you know, we have that tool already. These tools can analyze API behavior, detect anomalies, and ultimately prevent attacks. And then, okay, going to going back to protect, well, API security testing is can be counted as a form of protection, no? kasi malaki naman yung breadth niya. And then, uh, I would like to highlight your web application firewall. This is similar, very similar to the firewall and uh, plus IPS that I've mentioned earlier. So web application is, is just that this one is very specific to web application. Okay. So this is a good uh, uh, security measure that you can that you can employ uh, to protect your system. It has a big impact actually. Because most WAF applications are really intelligent. That's how it is uh, developed. And uh, yeah that's how that's how it is developed nowadays. No? Very intelligent in WAF application. WAF web application firewall natin. And then again, uh, we have uh, IAM. Uh, we have to protect our users. No? To, we implement IAM solutions to control access to APIs. That's, that's why it be, we, we, we are counting so much on IAM. Diba? Yeah, with IEM, we can control access to APIs and ensure proper authentication and authorization. Okay. Uh, and of course, IAM, even without this one, is that IAM is very important kasi uh, uh, to, you know, to, have a, to have a single source of truth when it comes to identity. No? You, don't, you don't rely on the identity of one in server one you don't rely to the identity of the same person one on server number two so you must have a single source of truth in terms of identity and that is iam and then you define everything there what it can access what it is authorized what he or she is authorized to access okay and then meron pa tayo ngayon uh, well on the detect side uh, yan, API monitoring analytics, for example, tapos na tayo na-identify na natin, na-protect na natin, then we, we don't end there. We have to continuously detecting what is happening to our, to our SAP. Kasi, kaya we have this API monitoring and analytics in order to track API usage pattern. Detect anomalies. So, normal activity, biglang naging abnormal, that is an anomaly, and identify potential malicious activities, no? Baka mamaya, same, per, same identity, yun pala, no? may nakatutok na ba na <laughs> nag-login siya, then iba na yung ginagawa. Something like that. So we have to continue si Moe. And we, we, have to, we, make, we have to make our system very sensitive. Kasi with AI right now, yung AI natin ngayon is uh, being employed offensively. No? Yung mga threats natin ngayon, ngayon to nowadays are uh, AI uh, enabled. So they can uh, hide or they can work below the radar by emulating a real human behavior. Uh, and that is really a big problem. No? 
Okay. Anyway, moving on. Uh, on the response side, uh, we can employ again yung API threat detection and prevention to respond kasi marami namang feature yan. And then, again, going back to secure code review. No, baka pwede natin balikan yan if ever. Probably, we can just get the, I don't know, we, we can probably get the SAP to a certification again uh, of this uh, new module that you're going to install, how security is, what are the levels of security that passes through from development to production. Okay, So those are, those are the things. Later on, uh, I'm going to sh show you where can we get the solution that I've been mentioning here. Kasi marami, uh, with as Westcon and, and as uh, Arc One, uh, there is no single solution when you say WAF, when you say IAM, when you say API security. Marami. So our best practice is that we go, we go and understand your environment, then your requirement. Which one has the best fit? Which one has the best fit means that when we deploy that, there is, of course, it should be the best. It, it should give you the most advantageous product. But other thing there is that it should be implemented with the least risk. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, baka mama, itong product ko, napakaganda, no? Uh, Gartner number one. But in reality, when you install that, you have to change everything on its surroundings or adjust many things on its surroundings for it to work. So, wala din, di ba? So, ang ginagawa natin is that we understand the environment. Where is the, le the least risk product that we can use to enhance your security? Okay. And number three is yung monitor. This one, as we move forward, uh, nagiging, ano na, nagiging very, very, very specific na sa SAP. No? This one is to monitor and sta, respond to sensitive user naman, activity, sensitive user activity, and SAP B1 specific indicators of compromise. So again, using the NIST framework to lead you or to, get, to, to help you mat, make your security posture more mature. No? So identify, stay, identify, uh, pillar, we have the, we have to use the SIEM, no? SIEM, the UIBA, and then your threat intelligence feed, uh, the threat intelligence feeds uh, does not need to be the same feed coming from the brand of your SIEM and UIBA. You can actually employ third party because the UIBA, SIEM are open for third party integration, no? Kung anong meron kayo, uh, which you think is much better for you. So, pwede namang gumamit ng third party, no? To beef up the capability of your UIBA and yung SIEM, okay? And then, these three, uh, SIEM, UIBA, and uh, Threadtail, uh, play a very good, uh, very good role in the protect, detect, and respond area. So again, marami pa, IAM, network, I'll go through it because these are important eh, uh, to, ha to be highlighted. And then, where I am now? Uh, under the identify, no? And then I mentioned about the protect. And then, I I I'll add something dito sa protect, no? Yung, ano mismo, IAM. Dito sa detect, I I'll add something about the network traffic analysis. You know, I mentioned earlier that we have to be very sensitive when it comes to uh, safeguarding our system, SAP B1 being a critical application, is that we have to start from the network. And one way to do that is to employ network traffic analysis tool. Network traffic analysis tool. Network siya, but it is not dependent on what uh, security information and events that is captured by your, uh, but by your, by your security device test. So independent siya. Okay, so this one is going to detect anomalies and potential indicators of compromise within your system. Okay, this, this one, uh, I would say this one is uh, expensive. So this one, pwedeng ilagay lang siya doon sa segment near or within the segment of your SAP B1 modules. So doon lang siya ilalagay. No? Kasi we are very specific in securing and determining the indicators of compromise within a SAP B1. Okay. 
Uh, uh, okay? Uh, then, dagdagan pa natin, may threat hunting platform. The threat hunting platform is that you don't wait for SIEM to tell you. You don't wait for NTA to tell you. Or you, the UEBA to alert you. Or the threat intelligence feeds to tell you that, oh, in other company have uh, uh, these, these things happened already. No, threat hunting platform is that it's uh, proactive. Uh, so, say yung nagahanap before before a uh, incident hits your organization. So, medyo sa yung proactive tool. Kasi lahat sila kasi yung iba, kahit gaano man kabilis, these are all reactive. It's just they're waiting for an event to happen to notify you as fast as possible. But threat hunting platform is different. Okay? And then meron din siyang log analysis management. And then yung, if you're in the cloud, uh, you should take advantage of the uh, cloud security monitoring of the the uh, offering of the cloud provider in giving you the cloud security monitoring because cloud being a very uh, new technology is that don't nila kinarga lahat yung mga capabilities that are present in the on-premise environment plus the necessary security monitoring and security capability when you go into the cloud so I would say na mas marami na siyang capability and functionality and mas granular na yung pwede mong gawin sa mga cloud uh, security solution. Okay. That is assuming that you have that uh, SAP B1 system in the cloud. Okay. Then, uh, lastly, yung ating four, uh, fourth uh, practical strategy is that yung monitor for leak SAP B1 data and user credentials. When we say SAP uh, leak data and user credentials. Sometimes leak data are intentional and intentional. Uh, yun ang masakit dun, eh. So we have to use uh, magnetics. But uh, let me go through one by one. Is that yung uh, when we ano, yung mga users natin, no? yung mga user credentials, especially mga privilege, baka pinagpipestahan na yan sa dark web. So uh, this is very ideal. Now we have to identify dark, we, and we have to employ dark web monitoring. It depends on the cruciality and the uh, and the size of our deployment. No, uh, kung talagang we have the means uh, to spend or to invest, so we have this. Uh, we can deploy yung dark web monitoring. No? Kasi makikita mo dito. Bakay yung pangalan mo nandun na with your password. Na. So it's actually a tool also that is associated with uh, threat uh, threat hunting platform okay. and then again I, I am uh, is very crucial when it comes to the identify stage and then the protect uh, stage and up to the detect because of the uh, you know, unusual access patterns of unauthorized or unauthorized access attempts of the legit users legit siya, pero unusual yung activities niya. so I am can play a good role to that then again you try intelligence feeds uh, endpoint detection uh, yeah, you know, uh, not to play in that stage. And then the the pulang on the protect part is that yung data loss prevention solution. Data loss prevention solution, we we, we just view it as encryption. But it's more than that because uh, sometimes yung data loss prevention uh, does not only make the data unusable if you are not the right person to use that. Or hindi lang niya hindi lang niya ginagawang or hindi lang niya prevent yung data to, to go out of the organization or to be sent to someone else which is not part or private to that document. It also detects uh, parang ano din, it also detects yung mga data exfiltration. Okay? Uh, either the file or the data is tagged as uh, confidential or not. Pagka nag-iba yung behavior niya, uh, the, day, the DLP will come into play. And I mentioned kanya, network traffic analysis, uh, which is very similar to the function it gives under the third, uh, under the third, uh, sorry, under the third strategy. Okay. And then SIEM, user behavior, cloud security monitoring. Those are, those, mapansin ninyo, no, naglalaro siya sa mga ganyan, no, sa mga ganyang mga solution. Uh, because 
uh, the intent of this presentation is to protect specifically the sub B1 and sub B1 uh, is an application serving by fly server pa nga sometimes may, may naka web file na di ba or naka how do you call that one naka web access na so we have we're protecting now the security uh, we're protecting now the system via the I, proper identity right behavior uh, controlled use of data we monitor the activities of those people within the network and then we tell them whether that is good or bad. That's how we protect now the sub B1 system. That principle, you can actually apply that to other systems that you have. No? Kasi lahat naman ng, most of the systems are serving people. Diba? May mga ginagumagamit talaga dyan na mga uh, user, power user, uh, viewer. Diba? So it can be applied as well. Okay, so for me to demonstrate yung mga solution namin, I have here a use case, no? Uh, hopefully, okay lang sa inyo to, use case, because this one, a use case for a logistic company. Uh, meron niya logistics company here, nakita ko kanina, sa mga, sa mga guests. Uh, this one is generic, no? Uh, this just one, we just created this one to demonstrate how can we deploy our solution. So in this case, Ang use case uh, for the logistic company is just to, uh, there is a need to optimize supply chain efficiency. Efficiency is but we need to optimize. And at the same time, deliver, uh, speed up the delivery timeline. Because, you know, if you lower down the, or you shorten the delivery time, you save money. So that is the intent here. So, ganito. So we have the business platform. We, we call it the speed, uh, medyo, in invento lang din namin yan. Feed, no? And then below that is the technology platform or the ICT platform. We call it SAFE because it delivers secure data, advanced threat detection, fortified network security, and enhanced access controls. So, lang, no? SAFE, SAFE platform. So, with this in mind, no, before I go to uh, some uh, ways on how to position or on how we deliver the our solution. So, I introduce ko muna, uh, pardon me if I'm going to do some commercial here, is that uh, because as Westcon, we have different products, no? So, since we're talking about security here, information security is one of our bread and butter. So, we have four major solutions for this one. Varonis, Broadcom, Palo Alto, and Jeff Kalar. Information security includes uh, the data itself, data security. and with that, for that aspect, no, when you secure and you when you employ or when you are after the data governance, Baronis is a good solution. I don't know if you have heard of that, but if not, uh, our team, uh, we can do a uh, individual session, of course, through Arc One. Then Broadcom is a very broad, <laughs> it has a very broad solution. Uh, and it's not all about communication, it's about security. Dapat yan, broad, broad sec na, no? I'm just kidding. Okay, so Broadcom. So marami siyang, from, ito naman is from uh, endpoint to the cloud. Meron siya. Endpoint security, it secures the identity, meron siyang data protection, network security, and SASE. Identity security because it has an IAM solution. And meron siyang PAM solution. Okay. And Palo Alto, uh, hopefully most of you heard of Palo Alto already. So Palo Alto is, is a true blue security company. So it now evolved from an on-premise solution provider to a cloud security provider. So, siyang, so whatever technology that it has on on-premise approach, dinala niya yan sa cloud. That's why meron siyang SaaS solution. And it's very mature already. And then, uh, similarly, meron tayong Zescalar. Zescalar is very strong in the Philippines, no? Uh, kasi meron siyang mga... It has the most number of pop sites, meaning to say that when you use Zescalar, baka bumilis yung application mo, okay? Because of the uh, pop application that are interconnected by uh, a fabric, medyo mabilis yung connections niya. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. 
So, this color, meron tayong marami siya. These are big names, no? Secure Remote Access, Cloud Protection, Secure Web Gateway, Secure Cloud Migration, and Remote Collaboration. Okay. By the way, no? Uh, palagi na mention yung SASE, SASE here, uh, Secure Web Gateway, meron pa, where is that? Or, or probably a CASB. These are, if you see firewall or the unified traffic manager that you have on-premise, so it has firewall, IPS, well, application firewall, uh, antivirus, anti-malware, URL filtering, probably proxy, uh, application monitoring, application control, all those all those capabilities nilagay na nila sa cloud. So baka meron pa akong ibang na-mention, hindi na-mention that, that their SaaS is capable of providing. So marami kasi mga services na ang SaaS. Okay? So, SASE, ni Palo Alto, SASE ni Zescalar, SASE ni Broadcom, uh, at one point, almost the same, pero when you go to advanced capabilities, doon sila nagbabago, no? Kaya, mayroon pa rin silang konting uh, differentiation from each other, okay? Now, oh, cloud security, nagbigay na focus sa cloud security, no? Informa cloud security, well, uh, informa uh, sorry, sorry, information security can be on-prem and can be on-cloud. So, Cloud security, I've mentioned Palo Alto, Broadcom, and Ciscalar. Now we have a uh, dedicated cloud security, Cato Networks, and F5 also is a good player now when it comes to cloud security because of its uh, uh, F5 uh, XC solution. Okay. Although F5 doesn't call its uh, SASE a SASE, it has its own terminology, more or less the same then. Uh, don't quote me on that, pero that's how I understood the, the F5XC cloud solution. Okay. Yun. Uh, then network security. Uh, these are many, you know, all good player talaga yung ano, F5, Palo Alto, Ziskelar, Broadcom. Uh, yan. And then we have Beyond Trust. Beyond Trust is a uh, PAM solution. Efficient IP uh, protects your DNS and, of course, manages your IP address management and it gives you a DHCP approach, uh, proper DHCP architecture. No? Because sometimes ang DHCP natin, we just, uh, no? uh, ah, sa service na Microsoft yan. Diba? We, we always do that. Eh, diba? Or DHCP sa may branch tayo, we just use the router or the core switch to deliver the DHCP. When it works, it, it's not a good practice. The, that's what efficient IP is all about. Okay. Then we have NetScout for DDoS protection. And then NetScout, uh, F5 and uh, NetScout delivers a good DDoS, uh, DDoS protection. Especially if you have a good, uh, good uh, big shop, network shop. No? If you are managing and protecting a good number of uh, critical application like SAP, probably you might want to think DDoS, dedicated DDoS protection. It's not the DDoS not the DDoS functionality of firewall or IPS. No? So, pwede ka tayo maglagay ng dedicated DDoS devices, appliance. Okay. And similarly with A10 network. The difference between A10 and F5, uh, A10, uh, well, without mentioning yung mga capabilities, capabilities nila, where are they good at, where are they bad at, is that A10, medyo mas cheaper as compared to F5. Okay. <laughs> and then network infrastructure, this is, uh, not, I, I just want to mention, uh, kasi we are system integration and we partner with, with Arc1 network, infra, network and infrastructure. We have solution, Extreme Networks, Cradle Point, Nokia, Audioco, and uh, then Audioco Chinabaya is for under the collaboration tool. Well, Extreme Networks, I just want to add, is that meron siyang NAC network access control solution. Okay. Uh, maganda rin siya. Uh, so it's not only Cisco that has a network access control. It's not only for Scout. Extreme has that solution. Okay. And kernel point, uh, meron siyang uh, good solution for SD1 wireless. Uh, and uh, mga ragedize. Ito yung mga, mga routers natin sa mga far flung places. If you have that in uh, southern Philippines, diba? you can you may want to check uh, kernel point. And it is actually compatible with ano, with Meraki of Cisco. Okay, now, uh, that's the commercial, long commercial. Now, 
Uh, I have said earlier, if you remember at the bottom left, the safe ICT platform, no? meron tayong mga, mga building blocks kasi dyan eh. Now, what if you, our customer, needs only to have this one, yung pinakauna natin, kasi wala pa nga, di ba? Application in API security. All of a sudden, no? uh, our security is now happening on the application and API layer. And then, ultimately, no, meron pala tayong big, big problem sa data protection itself. Maliban sa nakakalat na, wala, tala, wala talagang in charge for that one. And then, network security. Network security is going to be the platform of those API and the data protection. No? Kasi even if you have the data, you have the API, if your network security is not properly in place, uh, medyo shallow. Okay, uh, that's what I'm saying. No, so how do we do that? So, sa amin, uh, we have these products, the one that I described earlier, yung Zescalar, uh, for the, probably the data protection in the cloud, and uh, no name for the API security, and XHub also, no name, and XHub al has almost the same uh, playing field, that is application and API security. Kasi depends lang kung ano yung uh, pinaka needs where which which of the product gives you more value. Ah, okay. In the interest of time, ah, okay. Uh, I'm almost, uh, I'm almost done. Anyways, so this one, uh, application and API security, cyber data protection, network security, will deliver this capabilities when grouped together, no, yung cloud security, runtime protection, posture management, detect and block API attacks, detection response, and sensitive data discovery and API protection. Okay, so these are the uh, critical capability that we should have. No? Pagdating dito sa, when we talk about API, data, and network security. Okay, another thing is that uh, if we want to enhance the security posture, of our network, we have by uh, network by having a network traffic visibility analysis, uh, by having this threat and vulnerability management and cyber data protection again. So we have a good tool for that. We have Exahub, Discolor, and this time with Tenable for the VA vulnerability assessment and Gigamon, uh, Gigamon to open up the network para dun sa mga insertions ng mga devices. Okay, so we have this. Uh, benefits, network performance monitoring, and optimization uh, may improve definitely yan. And advanced detection prevention, incident response and forensics, and cloud security monitoring. Okay. Again, for the naman, uh, for the network in forensic security, we can employ the uh, combination of Juniper and Gigamon. Uh, we don't have Cisco, but I, I know you, you, you have a lot of uh, Cisco devices in your, in your shop. But a uh, good Part of that is a good uh, alternative for that is Juniper. Well, you might want to look into that. Okay. Ayon. So, last slide is that this West Coast Solution Portfolio. Again, uh, our Cisco, our West Coast Solution Portfolio is for security, for network, and unified communication. Okay. Our security solution starts from code up to the cloud. So, we can. You know, in between that, we can provide the necessary security, not only for SAP B1, but also for your other systems. And of course, in partnership always with Arc1. Ayun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Pons. So, indeed, leveling up our digital game, it is. So, um, for our next slide, um, please answer this um, quick survey form flashed on your screen. Uh, please scan it using your camera phones and you will be redirected to a form. Um, by answering this, you will get one entry to our raffle draw later on after the panel um, question and answer. So worry not because I'll also be sending the link of the form via that box. So did you already um, see the link in your chat box? Okay. 
So now, I'd like to call on our panelists for today. We have RV Sagukstok, for, um, the, our SAP Business One Technical Head, Mr. Pons de la Cruz, the West Con Solutions Architect, Mr. Erwin Padrique, our CEO, Glenn Mujeres, the SAP Business One Account Manager for Vismin, and Mr. Ruel Abustan, the SAP Business One Account Manager for Luzon. Okay, so I, I don't know if this was addressed already. Um, there's a question from Miss Ivy. How can we be sure that an API is secure if we will be connecting to another software? So I think Sir Pons can answer this. So, so there, there, are, there are many. Okay, there, there, there are many ways to check. No, uh, number one is that. The API itself. That's why we have a code validation. Okay. Uh, I, I think I just failed to mention this in the presentation, but we have Attack IQ. Attack IQ checks the validity and integrity of an API code. That's one. Number two is that once it is already in use, no? Uh, kasi nagbabago yung state ng application, eh. baka mamaya na-inject ka ng anything yan, di ba? Ng, uh, what else? Uh, whatever kind of program, diba? So that's why we always have to check. Uh, kay kanina, we always have to check yung regular checking or in fact continuous checking na yung utilization ng API natin to ensure that the API is not abused or is not being utilized by illegitimate users or illegitimate applications. That's why yung continuous monitoring, no name art, uh, no name no name uh, tool can tell you which one which of the application is very insecure there is a tool for that nalalaman niya kaagad instead of pwede rin now you check that you, you check the code or you employ the tool that is dedicated for that designed for that kind of uh, for that kind of uh, question no? it, insecure ba o secure yung aking, ano, yung aking uh, API so I answer your question, uh, siguro, anyway, meron pa naman siguro follow-up now, so I'll give you a more concrete answer for that uh, with documentation. Okay. okay, thank you, Sir Pon. So, um, another question um, from Ms. Cherry of Plantation. Um, is it advisable as a client to install RSP or is it wise that SEP supplier will install it? So I think RV can answer this. Um, if you have already the SA, um, the um, technical user, because you need to have technical user for you to connect to SAP B1 server. So if you have access na kayo sa technical user, you can install it on your own and you can configure it on your own. But if not, it is highly suggested na yung provider ninyo yung mag set up. Okay. Thank you, Arvs. So another question from um, an a guest IT. How secure Miraki MX75 is for SAP Business One? I, I, will, I will answer the connectivity part of the Miraki. Miraki MX75 is an SD1. So you know when and the way an SD1 SD1 SD SD1 work is that it's easy to connect, but in between that is a very high level of security. Uh, there is authentication, the devices, the, the 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 certificates. You know, you cannot just connect together if the certificates are invalid. So, certificate is a good a good way to secure or to establish the security between the SD1 and MX75. Hopefully, I'm tama yung sabi ko na no? MX75. A model is SD1 naba. If it's D1, yes, that's the that, that's the way how it works. But if MX75 is, can you type in? Is is it an uh, access point? And I'm, I'm not even sure about that. A firewall, yeah, firewall or SD1. Okay, yes, also, yes. So if it's a firewall, maybe it's a firewall mechanism. Then of course we can. And it's, it, it has a very granular control. I remember this one. 
uh, from my previous life no uh, yung uh, yung firewall control niya in uh, very granular and application wise uh, be- because this one and SD1 plus firewall so you can be very specific in terms of application that is going to pass over it uh, so yun okay thank you so any more questions um from our attendees for today before we'll wrap up everything from our panelists okay no more questions so i think um it's a wrap up thing na. can i ask um parting words from everyone before we'll run or go to our raffle so we'll be starting off but um by RV next to Sir Pon, Sir Irwin, Glenn, and Ruel. Okay. So, um, I think there's a chat na kung saan ba madadownload yung um, SAP Business One Remote Support Platform. You can download it through the website. I already chatted yung link. You can download it and just make sure na meron kayong SID. And um, if there, if you have some questions or clarifications, how to set up the remote support platform, feel free to ask us or contact us to help us. Natin, which is sapb1care at arc1.com.ph. So that would be all. Thank you so much for um, everything, and hope to see you on our next uh, tech talk. Yeah. So, so parting shot, no. Uh, since I spoke about uh, security, you know, uh, security is not just about security. Security is now a productivity tool. And security secures not the system itself, but your success. You have to secure that by using security tools. Yeah. Sir Irwin. Yes, so salamat everyone. We're so thankful for continuously participating. We look forward to your participation in our upcoming events. Again, all these initiatives, all these topics are actually designed to make us all very efficient in running our own network. Again, salamat and looking forward to see you soon. Glenn? Yes, hi everyone. I think nasabi na nila lahat. So, uh, first, thank you to RV and to Pons. Uh, salamat. And then to everyone, if you have a question, just send us an email uh, or a text or chat. Chat lang, no? Okay. Daghang salamat. Ugma yung hapo. Nice to see you guys. Enjoy CDO, Glenn. Sir well. Hi. Uh, thank you everyone, no? Uh, for attending this uh fruitful uh, event no uh, together with our team and especially for sir uh, sir pon no <clears throat> so just in case uh, you have some question no uh, you can email us uh, or you can email directly uh, to roel uh, underscore abustan uh, at arquan.com.ph thank you thank you all Okay, so I think before we proceed to our raffle, may I request to have a pictorial from everyone, from the attendees, and also from um, Westcon and Arc One team. Uh, please open your um, cameras. Okay, let's do a family photo op. <laughs> Okay. Is everyone opening Afila, their you cameras? Need, you need to allow their cameras. So, sa mga attendees. Wait. Na-allow na ba? Can you help Okay. I think everyone is already um, opening their cameras. Wait. Okay. 
for a moment. Naka open. Can you help Arvs? Um, you can check sa current na or sa settings mo sa meeting. Uh, what na uh, what I can do is yung manually allow them one by one. Okay, allow cameras for attendees. I already allowed everyone. So sorry for that um, commercial break. <laughs> okay, we're all good. Okay, together mode. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Smile. Okay, one last. One, two, three. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, and our attendees for that um, commercial break. Okay. So, this is the most awaited part na, the raffle draw. May I call on Ms. Wendell Hernandez, our um, account manager from Luzon. Hi, Ms. Min. Hello, Phil. Thanks. And can we give them another uh, one minute to answer the feedback form? As of now, we received 25. Oh, 25. Yeah. Guys, 25 there will, on the call. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. will be five winners of 500 peso each. Ha? Um, this is Care of by Westcon Team. So, this is a voucher. I so, to answer yeah. the feedback form. Nasa chat po ang link will give you another minute to yes. answer. Okay. So, mar marami pa bang na receive Ms. Wind? Wala pang nadagdag. Wala pang nadagdag. May nag-answer pa. Okay. 354, Ma we can do the raffle at 354. 354. Three? Okay, it's 354 already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, Share my screen. Okay, who's excited? Oy, my hey, mga for na. our first winner. Congratulations, Arian Tanyo, for our second winner. Mr. Ryan Cardinal, congratulations. Third winner. Jet Franciscan Galariosa. Congratulations. Two more. Two more. Two more. Okay. <laughs> Ranel Trinidad. Congratulations, Ranel. And for the last winner, June Mark Libut Libut. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you, Miss Wins, for that. And for all the winners, I've um, tapped my email address. Please give me an um, send me an email at phila underscore bensi at arc dash one dot com dot ph for the prizes.
it. Okay. So again, thank you for your time and hope you had an engaging afternoon with Arquan Solutions team and Westcon Comstore team. Here in Arquan, we've always got you covered. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. For- Bye. See you everyone. Thank you, babe. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b